So in this problem, we're told an unmarked police car traveling a constant 95 kilometers per hour is passed by a speeder traveling 135 kilometers per hour. Precisely one second after the speeder passes, the police car steps on the accelerator. If the police car's acceleration is 2 meters per second squared, how much time passes before the police car overtakes the speeder, assumed moving at a constant speed? So the first thing we have to do is understand what's actually going on. So we know at some point uh, we have the speeder, right, denoted by S and P is for police car. Uh, the police car is going to be traveling 95 kilometers per hour while the speeder is 135 kilometers per hour. And then we know after one second, right, so one second is going to pass. Obviously, the speeder is going to be in front of this police car because it's going faster. We know at this point in time, uh, the, the police car is going to step on the gas, right? He's going to speed up or the accelerator and he's going to speed up. And eventually, after some amount of time, we don't know, uh, he is going to catch up. But we don't know his speed there, uh, but we know the speeder is just traveling at a constant speed. And so what we're trying to find is how much time, uh, right, how much time after this one second the police car is uh, caught up to the speeder. So how are we going to do this? So the first thing that we actually need to find is the distance between the speeder and the police car after this one second. So how far are they going to travel? Or how much fast or how much distance is the speeder going to be ahead of this police car um, after this one second? So the first thing we need to do though before we do that to make this problem a lot easier is to convert both of these values into meters per second since we're going to be dealing with mainly meters per second when solving this. So let's go ahead and do that first. So uh, 95 kilometers per hour. I'll show you how to convert it and then the other one I'm just going to do on my own. Uh, but 95 kilometers per hour, you should know that one kilometer is the same as a thousand meters right the k just means a thousand basically uh, and then to convert from hours into seconds you should know one hour is 60 minutes and then one minute is 60 seconds so the hours cancel with hours minutes cancel with minutes and we have meters over seconds now let me plug this in so 95 times a thousand divided by 60, divided by 60, you get 26.8, or sorry, 3, we'll say 389. The units are going to be meters per second. So that's going to be this one right here. Now you're just going to do the same thing, but with 135. So 135 times 1,000 divided by 60, divided by 60. So 37.5. So 37.5. Meters per second. That's going to be your uh, speeder. So keep in mind, this is V of the speeder. This is V of the police guy. Um, but yeah, so these are the two speeds. And so we know in this one second, the right, the one second that passes, the police or sorry, the speeder is going to travel thirty-seven point five meters since it's meters for every one second. And then the police car is going to travel twenty-six point three nine meters for every second. So the distance that this guy's ahead is going to be 37.5 minus this value because this is how far the speeder is uh, after that one second and this how is how far the policeman is so subtracting them gives us their distance so uh, let me do that 37.5 minus 26.389 you're going to get delta x i'll write it over here delta x is about 11.1111 repeating um i'll just do it like that 11.11 meters and cool so now we know what its distance is, right? And so the way you're going to do this is you have to set two equations equal to each other. And so the equations are going to be including the time variable. So the way this works is we know distance is equal to velocity times time, okay? And also, this is the main kinematic formula for it, so you should actually know this, equals v sub 0 times t plus 1 half a t squared. So we're trying to find, right, when uh, their delta x's are basically equal. But keep in mind, when we do the policeman, we have to add a value. So uh, I'm just going to show you how it works first, and then we'll do it. So from this point in time, right, so from this point in time right here, we need to find uh, basically its change in position, the formula for it. So delta x equals v sub 0 times t. But keep in mind that this guy isn't accelerating at all. Therefore, the acceleration is just zero. So his position 
is just going to be equal to a velocity uh, multiplied by however long. So we can call this, uh, this is the speeder, right? So 37.5 uh, multiplied by t. And then keep in mind, we're trying to find at the point of the policeman. So actually, I'm going to leave it like this. Um, so this is the delta x for the speeder. And we have to set it equal to the delta x for the policeman because we want them to be equal. But we're also going to have to take into account this delta x right here, or the change in the position that he's ahead. Okay, um, so we have 37.5t equals, and then now we have to do the formula for the policeman. Um, so for that one, we know their velocity is 26.389. So I'm just using this formula again, but for the policeman, times t plus one half, uh, and then we have a. So A is their acceleration. So what they're going to be accelerating at is 2 meters per second at this point. So we actually have to include A for this one. So times 2. Keep in mind, 1 half times 2 is just 1. So we basically just have plus T squared. But keep in mind, this is their position uh, relative to the starting point. But notice, we're trying to find when they equal each other, I guess. But we have to take into account this delta X. And the way we do that is you can just add it to this guy. Since his position, right, it's basically the position, is going to be 11.11 .11 meters ahead of this one. So we actually have to add 11.11 to this side. So this right here plus t squared. Um, if you go ahead and solve this, so let me move this to the other side. And so you're going to have t squared minus 11.11t uh, and then minus 11.11 equals 0. So... Uh, plugging this in, uh, let's see what you get. So uh, I'm just going to plug it into my graphing calculator. You can use the quadratic formula to solve for it. I think it's just easier doing it graphing. Um, but all I do is just plug it into your graph that formula. Hopefully you have a graphing calculator. Uh, and then you just solve for when it crosses zero. And so that's basically what the quadratic formula does. It finds where it's equal to zero, right? Because you set it equal to zero. But you should find a value of about t equals 11 or sorry 12.03 so about 12.03 uh, i'm just gonna round to 12 so 12 seconds is gonna be how long it takes for its distance to be equal right for the distances to be equal so uh basically the time it takes right so this is the time it takes for it to catch up to the point right here so after how much time 11 or sorry 12 seconds my bad but i really want you to understand how this actually works so you set the delta x is equal to each other and the way that works is keep in mind it's basically delta x is your position relative to each other so 37.5 t is how far this thing's gonna travel beyond this point okay right and then if we set it equal to right we're trying to find where the t's or how much time it takes for their delta x's to be equal. But we also took into account this 11.11 meters. So this is basically the zero point, but this one is, or its distance is relative to this starting point is 37.5t, right? Plus 11.11, right? Because you have to include this distance relative to this starting point. And then the policeman's position relative to its starting point is its velocity times its time plus... Uh, the one half at squared, right? So this formula right here. So essentially, we just had to take into account their accelerations. And then we found when their delta x's are equal to each other relative to this point. And then we just found out how much time that took. Um, and yeah, so the time it took, or the time that took place at was 12 seconds. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, so 12 seconds, that's going to go ahead and be your answer for this problem. Uh, it's really good to draw out what's going on. So just keep that in mind. And then make sure you were, it was really necessary to do this to actually solve. But yeah, and then the trick is just setting their distances equal to each other or their change in positions. But yeah, so 12 seconds is going uh, to go ahead and be your answer. And uh, yeah, hopefully you found this video useful.